<laughs> Hello, dear African youth, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm very happy and pleased to speak to you today about a very important subject. Let me introduce myself first, and my name is Karima Ghanem. I'm from Morocco. Uh, I'm president of the International Center for Diplomacy, and uh, I'm also CEO of Africa My Home. Uh, I'm very happy and honored to speak to you today about a very important subject related to uh, leading change. More specifically during this period of time, since the start of the pandemic of COVID-19, the world is facing uh, rapid transformation, uh, rapid digitalization, and a lot of socioeconomic challenges. The world got more complicated with the war on Ukraine and Russia, and the increase of fuel prices, the, uh, the uh, risk of, um, <clears throat> of uh, food security, uh, energy security, health security, and a lot of cha challenges that the African continent more specifically is facing today. And of course, this has impacted labor force, this has impacted uh, a organizations and institutions. This made us think and reflect about the way we should lead a change but a new different change because today we have to increase our resilience capacity, but at the same time, it is very important for us to think outside of the box, to get out of our comfort zone and try new things. It's not easy, it's risky, uh, especially if you are a young person starting your own business, very difficult for you to, absorb the market and the changes that are happening today in the market. It needs a lot of changes within institutions. It need mentality change. It needs a lot of communication. So today we're going to tackle what we call strategic communication for leading change in Africa. Leading change needs a lot of efforts but more specifically needs mentality and behavior change. And these are one of the longest changes ever because it happens through time. It needs a lot of efforts. It needs different strategies. And today we are very impatient with change because of the situation that we're living in. We need things quicker, but it's very difficult. How can we increase our capacity for change? So let me start a little bit by talking about resistance to change. Why do you think people do not change their behavior? Maybe let's talk about COVID-19 example. <clears throat> it's very important to take this example because we're still living in COVID-19 period. Maybe there will be another COVID-19 period in the fall. We still live in the consequences of COVID-19. And it's not just about health. It's about mentality change. It's about resilience capacity. It's about adaptation. It's about risk management. It's about plan A, B, C, D in your life and in your institutions. So why people do not change behavior? First of all, maybe because people may not understand the message. Sometimes we are not clear about the way we're transmitting the message. They see themselves as vulnerable. And today, a lot of people are exposed, more exposed to vulnerability because of the changes that are occurring in the world economy and also in, 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 um, in, in the world of uh, business and also in institutions themselves. Trust the bearers of the message because sometimes 
uh, people tend to, to speak, they tell us a message, but huh, we think that they're not trustworthy enough. Or sometimes because the situation doesn't change and it takes a lot of time and effort to change, we think sometimes that these people are lying to us. Well, they're saying the same thing every time. They're trying to look for words to tell us a message and their messages are just promises and promises and promises. Nothing is moving forward. So sometimes people say, okay, they, they prejudge people even before listening to them. They said, okay, they're not going to do anything. Oh, they're going to say the same message all the time. And because people have to say very complicated and hard messages in crisis time, it's very difficult for, for them to transmit those messages. And it's very, very hard for people to accept those messages because they see their situation in their lives and also in their organizations, in the job market is not changing. I bet that some of you have heard similar messages since 2020. You keep your hopes. Okay, the situation is getting better. We're going to do X, Y, and Z. The situation is getting better. It's too, the situation is getting, wow, okay. But nothing is moving forward. So people start that start believing that things are not moving forward, there that is not changing. <clears throat> well, again, people may think the short-term benefits of the current behavior overweigh the long-term risks. How is that? Sometimes they want to move, they want to change their behavior towards certain issues, towards certain people and towards certain um, organizations. However, when they weigh the cost, they said that probably they, I'm not going to gain much. So they compare situations, say, okay, no, leave it. So they don't trust you, they don't bear your message. Some healthy choices are costly. And of course, you know, when you succeed and when you have to change something, especially if you have to take a drastic change, it costs a lot. And when we talk about costs, we're not talking only about money. There are a lot of things that you may lose by drastically changing something or taking a decision. That's why you need as a young leader to understand the environment where you're operating in order to take your own decision. Sometimes it will be very difficult for you to take the decision, but more specifically to communicate about the decision to yourself first, to your parents, family, to your friends, to your partners, to your environment. Sometimes it's very difficult. Especially, for example, if you have a startup, as a matter of example, a lot of startups of young people in the African continent got bankrupt. They couldn't go with the flow. It was very difficult for them during COVID-19, even bigger scale. You know, medium and, medium, uh, and large size uh, companies, they got bankrupt. So you have to take a decision whether to lay off your partners, your, your employees, if you have employees, uh, whether to shut down completely your, your startup, what are you going to do? How are you going to manage it? How are you going to communicate about it? Are you taking the right decisions? Yes, no, maybe. These are hard choices, but hard choices and being in the crisis time you need to prepare for it. That's why it is very important for us to understand how are we going to increase our capacity of adaptation and our capacity of resilience because Africa today is not Africa of yesterday. Africa today is not Africa before COVID-19. The whole world is in complete transformation. Uh, 
every single level in all sectors throughout all institutions. This requires a lot of efforts for mentality and behavior more specifically. You know, you might have a resources, even with the, the current situation, you might have a resources. But if you don't change your mentality and that of the people you're working with, it's very hard for you to manage the flow. Because today, you know, this is my phone, right? Tomorrow, I might have a different type of phone. Today we have 4G, tomorrow we have 5G. The next day you have 10G, I don't know. With technology, things are moving so rapidly more than we could imagine. Therefore, if you don't have the capacity to adapt to this rapid transformation, more specifically digitalization, and we're going to talk about it in the other course that I call digital passport, it will be very difficult for you to survive. Then you need to understand why you can't change your behavior and why the people you're working with are resisting to change, because that's very important. You need to swat yourself. You need to understand your strengths, your weaknesses, and the opportunities that may be pre present for you and also the risks. And sometimes in crisis time, it's not only about crisis. For example, a lot of people across the world took COVID-19 more as an opportunity to change than as a crisis. So it's very important to choose the way you're going forward. Okay, so, does some also recommended behavior may conflict with beliefs? You know, in Africa, you come from different backgrounds, from different cultural backgrounds, from different cultural countries, from different mentalities. You have different religions. You have different beliefs. And sometimes you build your decision based on your beliefs more often. In a corporate, or let's say in a multi-corporate environment, you will be working with people who believe differently. They have different cultures. They come with different corporate cultures. They have different religions. They have different ideologies. You need to be able to absorb those changes. You need to function within these uh, changes. You need to function within diversity. You need to work in teams with people in, and at the same time, you need to learn how to manage your interfunctional uh, relationships in a multicultural setting. It means that you have to work towards unity while appreciating diversity. It's not easy. Sometimes it takes us a lot of time and personal efforts to accept others. Sometimes accepting others from the same country, speaking the same language, having the same religion, having more or less the same beliefs. Sometimes it's very hard. It's not easy exercise. Today, the world is a global culture. It's a global uh, environment. Today, we have no borders with digitalization. You work with different people. You need to be able to accept changes and to accept diversity. It's very important for a leader to accept diversity. Well, after all, people believe that COVID-19 is a common disease and is not as serious. So, you know, in COVID-19, especially the first months, some people believe that COVID-19 is a very dangerous disease. Others did not even believe in COVID-19. And there were a lot of conspiracy theories around the disease itself. So you have to deal with those people. And these people are common people. They are your partners, they are your employees, they are your friends, they are your family. 
they are the people who are around you. So how are you going to take all these into consideration and try to formulate a message that would resonate with all? Here again, from a generic question about why people resist to change, so from another generic question, why change programs fail? Can anyone of you tell me why programs fail? Why more specifically uh, drastic changes fail? Because countries, governments, institutions, and also individual level, they are not prepared for change. Sometimes change comes all of a sudden. When COVID-19 came, it was just, oh, we were trying to understand what's going on. We were adapting as we are still questioning what's going on. We were not ready for COVID-19. We were not ready for confinement. We were not ready to change our lives. We were not ready to fail. We were not ready to stop education. We were not ready to get bankrupt, to lose our jobs and, and, and. We were not expecting this as we were, let's say we were not having any vision of what's going on in the future. But COVID-19 was a lesson for managers, for leaders, and for everyone. If you don't, uh, if you don't learn from the experience of COVID-19, it will be very, very difficult for you to move ahead in the future. So there are a lot of issues that we could speak about this today here, about why do we fail? Why do we fail? Because we don't have a vision. We don't have a strategy. Um, we don't have a plan. We don't have indicators to follow and monitor our plan. We don't have a risk management plan. We don't have what we call an anticipation plan. Because for example, COVID-19 happened. We might have another crisis. We might have another disease. Now we have the Russian-Ukrainian war. It caused an, a, 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 a rapid increase in fuel. It impacted logistics, transportation, then it impacted the, um, the all food chain all across the world. Increase of prices of food, then there is a crisis. If the war is prevailing, we might have a problem of food security in Africa. If the agreement that just happened between Russia and Ukraine to, uh, to, um, uh, to export wheat to Africa, it might be a problem. If the war is prevailing, we'll still have an increase of prices of fuel. Increase of prices of fuel, it means that all prices would increase. It means that the purchasing power is decreasing and decreasing and we'll have a lot of problems. And we'll come to losing jobs, we'll come to social cohesion and a lot of other issues. So then, we need as managers, as leaders, to take into consideration this external environment. We need to have a capacity of anticipating problems, doing a risk management plan, and doing plan A, B, Z. You should not do it only in your institution, but do it for yourself because it's very important. That is part of your resilience capacity that you need today, absolutely. There are two things you need today. Resilience capacity, and you need to upgrade your skills in order to 
follow the rapid changes that are going today. More specifically, you need to have your digital passport. And then you need to be a solution oriented, a result oriented, and someone who anticipates, someone who has a vision, someone who has a lot of scenarios and planning, and someone who needs to be able to diversify he, his or her skills in order to be able to do different types of jobs. I'll give you an example. I was working in a different sector before coronavirus. My sector was badly impacted, hit by COVID-19, complete shutdown, no events, nothing. Uh, the, the sector has really been very, very badly hit. As a leader and a manager, do I have to sit and wait? Do I have to make credit? Do I have to go to sit and cry for my path? Because, well, it's coronavirus and this happened and I'm losing my job and no. I needed to think about something else. I said, okay, now if I'm not going, if, if events are not happening, then there are a lot of events that are happening online. Okay, temporarily speaking, let me go and organize events online. But how am I going to do it? I'm not used to do it. I'm not familiar with platforms. Okay, let's get me uh, upgrade my skills. Well, if I don't have budget to do it, there are a lot of free courses. And you know, the best thing you can do, if you don't have to enter any platform, then you might get to Google or YouTube, do any type of tutorial, learn yourself. I have to learn how to use Zoom. I had to learn how to use different platforms. I had to learn how to make a website and a lot of things by myself. I, had, I, didn't, I even learned how to do video editing and design and, and, and. Why I had to do that? Because first of all, I did not have a budget to hire anyone to do that. Second, I needed to learn that because today, if you are hired, they will require from you to be polyglot, speak many languages, multifunctional, and, and have a lot of different skills, including digitalization skills. And today, because a lot of people are moving online, you know, for example, a social media community manager today needs to do community management, need to be content writer, need to do video editing, need to do graphic design, and, and, and. They will not hire 30 people to do that. They will hire only one person to do that. Then you have to start from yourself. Then moving from yourself to your organization, it, it will be uh, important to have a corporate culture. Then you need to change your management style. And this is what we're talking about in this presentation. So <clears throat> here you have to choose the style that you want. Not the style that you want per se, but the style that needed to be according to the people you have in your organization. So whether you choose to um, include your people in the decision-making process, so you make them participate, and there are la different layers of participation, um, or you choose uh, to collaborate, it means you see your employees as partners, or you choose, you know, uh, education slash delegation. So because there are a lot of people who direct, who who uh, manage projects, etc., but don't have the capacity to delegate or you know you choose a, a directive style you know so but today there are two styles that are very important make your people participate in the whole process of decision making process but at the same time I regard them as part of the solution regard them as partners why because if they are viewed as partners, if their word 
is valuable. They will own the decision. They will be part of the implementation process and they will be part of the evaluation process and they will be part of the sustainability strategy. Because you want to take sustainable decisions, you, may, you want to make impact, you want people to collaborate with you and participate with you in all your decisions. So then here, your management style needs to be different. But here, let me tell you again, you are in a digital world today. There are a lot of corporations who shifted into a digital corporation. It means that they are using everything digital. It means that their home is the WWW. Their home is a platform. Their home is work home. It means that they don't have an office and that the people are working from home then they have to embrace what we call management 3.0. And this is the new style of management. In the world of digital transformation, you need to upgrade your corporate culture to go digital, but at the same time, you need to upgrade your skills and that of your employees to have this digital culture. So let's skip this. You will have it in the uh, presentation. Okay, uh, then we talked a lot about behavior change. There is um, what we call in the communication strategies, behavior change communication. This is very important that you need to know. So we call it BCC. So BCC does develop communication strategies to promote positive change, positive behavior that, 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 that is appropriate to their setting means that you, you define your strategy, you do all your communication in order to make people change their behavior. It's like the consumer behavior, for, for example, for any product, you do a lot of advertising and you want people to buy the product, but you want people to sustain buying the product. So you do a, a strategy to change the behavior of people. All right, let's get the Corona buyers. You are a communication company that is hired by the Ministry of Health to do a communication campaign. And that campaign is designed to change citizens' behavior towards coronavirus. It means that you need them to put the mask, you need them to take precaution, you need them to respect social distancing, and at the same time, you need to uh, evaluate this behavior by the reduction of the cases of coronavirus in your country. So the way you are formulating your communication, you're formulating it in a way using different message packaging in order to influence the audiences to change behavior. It means that you're not doing communication just for the sake of advertising, but you want people to change their behavior. And you know, if you see, for example, all the communication that we have absorbed during coronavirus, you know, it impacted our lives. We changed our behavior. You know, even if now we're not, you know, uh, anymore, let's say not anymore, putting uh, mask everywhere and uh, doing um, social distancing, etc. But through time, we got used to it. In certain places, you know, unconsciously, when you see a lot of people, sometimes you have tendency to put your mask. So in, in, in the way you are setting your communication in crisis time, it means you have to study your audience. You have to study what they want, how they want it, and how they behave. Because you want them to act on the behavior. Your communication messages need to act on the behavior of people. So, you know, um, 
here as you see, this is a, like a behavior change communication and it has different stages. It's like Maslow, a uh, Maslow pyramid. So here we ha you have pre-contemplation. So uh, at, this, at the first minimum stage, you are not aware of the problem. And, you know, for example, when Corona started, a lot of people were not even aware of Corona. What is this Corona? So they were not aware of the danger of Corona, as a matter of fact. Then there is a stage, contemplation. It means that you are aware of the problem and of the desired behavior change. It means that you are, for example, bombarded with a lot of ads on TV and a lot of uh, awareness raising uh, throughout different types of uh, uh, channels. Um, and you know what they want from you. So, okay, I keep watching TV. They tell me, put the mask, you know, you need to have so your social distance and, and so I know what they want from me, but till now I'm not, I'm not reacting. I'm not acting. I'm just consuming the information. Then you have the uh, preparation. So again, I'm changing my strategy and my communication because I need to prepare you to to do the action. And then there's a common action stage, which highlights the practices of the desired behavior. It means that I started seeing, for example, after um, two weeks of advertising, I started seeing people doing respecting social distances in markets, etc. They're putting masks and, and, and. So I started seeing the action. Then the maintenance. So it's worth to sustain the behavior change. Here again, throughout the communication, I'm telling you, hey, even if COVID-19 reduced, even a lot of countries, you know, uh, it got rid of a lot of, you know, uh, severe um, measures and restrictive measures, etc. Hey, Corona is still here. I still need you to maintain your social distance and put the mask and blah, blah. So here you need to learn very much how you want to intervene. Uh, and, you know, we're just giving an example of coronavirus because it's easy, but you can uh, uh, apply your uh, this to different sectors and also to your context. So, of course, BCC process style, cycle. Any project, any idea has a cycle and any communication has a cycle. So, of course, first of all, you need to set goals and objectives. What do you want to change? What are the goals? What are the objectives? What are the sub objectives? Then you need to review. What are the things that has been done? What are the things that is that are available here? And what are the things that need to research in order to complete my review in order to put the right project and the right communication for the right audience. Then client research. Of course, you have partners, you have business partners, you have clients, you have employees, you have a lot of audiences. So you have to put a chart of audience. You have to do a matrix of audience analysis. You need to research. You know, sometimes when dealing with certain audiences, we just do profiling even. If, for example, I'm going to meet uh, Minister X, Y, I need to know who's, who's that minister, how he's taking his decision, uh, what are the things that I need to tell him, what are the things that I should avoid, and, and. So, so that your message and your communication would be efficient uh, with the, the person you want to communicate with or you want that person to change his behavior or take a decision. For example, you have a partner and you want that partner to sign a contract with you. Then you need to study this partner because your goal is not to meet, hey, how are you? Uh, let's have a cup of coffee, a cup of tea. And then you talk and talk and talk. And then after the talk, okay, I'll think about it. No, you want this person to sign the contract. Then you have to study the, the, the way this person is dealing so that you do better strategies so that this person would sign the contract with you. Creative design. When we talk about creative design, it's not graphic design. It's design of a whole project. You need to be creative. You need to have to embrace innovation in designing your project, in designing your message, 
in designing your communication. And because you are not just a monitor, you are a leader, it's, it makes a difference. You need to make, you need to, uh, make a difference between a manager and a leader. A leader is someone who can influence. Leadership is very important today. You know, a lot of people are managers but not leaders. You need to embrace leadership in, in your journey because it's, it's very important for you to build an influential network and that network would see you as an influential leader that can take the appropriate decision and that they can follow you. They might follow a leader, but not a manager because a manager just executing the decision, but the leader is making the decision. That's a whole difference. Pretest. You need to pretest. It's very important. When 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 you're doing something creative, you have to create a model. It's very important, especially if you're doing something new. In Corona, there are a lot of other there are a lot of different types of projects that are new. Um, but you don't know whether they will be successful or not successful. So it's very important to do a model. Um, and then you need to pretest. Um, then capacity building. Any project and any chance need capacity building and empowerment. It's very important to build an empowerment strategy so that your people would have the necessary skills in order to implement the changes that you want to implement. Then, of course, there is an implementation phase and then monitoring and evaluation. That's a whole normal cycle of a project, but you adapt it according to the nature of a project and also according to the sector. So um, there are four strategies for communicating change in your, in your organization. Uh, first of all, you have to emphasize, emphasize that change is inevitable. It means that you have to insist that change is important, it's part of a life. It's something that will happen anyway. Technology changes, regulation change, policies change, legislation change, so people change. You cannot stay always in your comfort zone. And, you know, to, to face the new markets, you need to think outside of the box. You need to be innovative. You need to change. You need to, uh, to adapt and you need to increase your capacity of resilience. You will deal with change in all different phases of your life. So it's not something new. It will come in a way with Corona, not Corona. There will be always changes in your life, in your institution, organization, in your country, government, etc. Stress that change is almost always experienced incrementally. Change is easier to deal with, but sometimes very important, very, very difficult to deal with stress. So you need to manage your stress factors. Um, and then one thing is very important. Sometimes change happens all of a sudden. Sometimes, or let's say most of the time, bigger scale changes, especially policies, legislations, and mentality changes, it happens throughout time. It takes a lot of time. And you know, we became so impatient in this world that it's very hard for us to embrace and understand those changes. We need change to happen quickly. And it does, if it doesn't happen, we're frustrated. So we have a lot of stressing factors. But we have to see that there are certain changes that need time. So you have to understand it and you have to accept it. Maintain a sense of urgency. You know, you need to generate momentum if you want to overcome resistance. So you have to remind your people that change is not a choice. They can only decide how they're going to react to it. And then the fourth one is articulate what success looks like. 
you need at least to explain to your people what this success will look like. If you want your team to buy in, it means that you want your team to own the decisions of changes that you're going to take. You need to provide them with a clear scorecard for success. Sometimes people can't imagine what success would look like. What does the change mean for your team? What does it mean for the organization as a whole? You need to set your goals very clear. You need to have a clear strategy and a clear plan. These are some of the most important four strategies you need to understand. Because you are a leader today, and because you want to promote uh, your projects, and you want to promote, to promote your culture, you need to understand the basics for embracing change. So what PCC can do? First of all, it increases more knowledge about change. It stimulates community employee dialogue. Dialogue is very important. You need to, to learn how to communicate and why we're choosing to have communication and strategic communication for leading change. Because you cannot lead change without communication. Communication is very important. Whether you want to promote your culture, whether you want to promote your project, whether you want to change the narrative about Africa, you need to communicate about it. And you need to better communicate it about it and you need to know how to communicate about it. And you need to know what can you communicate so that it can influence people to change behavior about or perception about what you want to communicate. That's very important. Promote essential attitudes, uh, change towards the new decisions, reduce discrimination against those who might be affected, create demand for information and services, advocate for more resources, and here is very important because the resources need money, need budget. And um, some of the changes need a lot of budget. So it would be important to have buy-in of everyone so that everyone would be in the same boat so that you can advocate for more resources, whether human resources or financial resources in order to implement the changes that you want to implement. Promote services for prevention, care. For example, this is just in the context of COVID. And the last part, which is quite important, is improve skills and sense of self-efficacy in order to deal with change. I told you my experience in COVID-19. So even if I was um, expert in, in some part of a di digitalization, but not all, when COVID-19 came, it accelerated this digitalization. There are a lot of mobile apps and other types of applications that I had no mere idea how to use them. But with COVID-19, I had to use them all because all different meetings that I had or different conferences that I had, they asked me to use a different platform, which was like a bit complicated for me. I said, okay, me, ah, I need to have a stop. I need to improve my skills in digitalization. And digitalization that I used to know before COVID-19 is not the same. So I had to upgrade my skills. So, okay, I said, uh, the best invention that I know is Google and then YouTube. So I started with free tutorials. I had to upgrade my skills. I have to learn how to use things by myself. So I needed to swat myself, okay, what are my strengths and what are my weakness? And what are the things that I need to improve in order to do the, the, my job right very well? So I had, I had to make a list of the skills that I needed to improve. And then I reserved time to study. And I did it online. And it was very good for me because it, it, it taught me new things. And I would say something important. If I did not do that, I would not have got any job to do during this crisis so i thought it well okay i'm in the confinement we're not doing anything we're not going out i anticipated that there will be a lot of work uh related to digitalization but i don't have that skill okay let me reserve this 
free time that I'm obliged to stay home for three months, then I have to study. So it was very important for me that I took this de decision. And that decision made me got a lot of work after the three months. So it's very important for you to strategize how you would be able to use your time efficiently in order to upgrade your skills. So the last part for this presentation is how we create a change, how we uh, set a communication plan uh, in order to communicate with, about the change. So um, first of all, to evaluate change impact and organizational readiness. So are my people prepared for this change? This is very important. You need to examine that. And then you need to understand why these people are not ready yet for change. What are the obstacles to prevent them from accepting the changes? Clearly define the change. What do you want to change exactly? Because change can be anything. What is your vision for the future? And if the process for change that you will be using, is it leading you to the vision and mission that you set? Is it responding to the goals and objectives that you set? Assess all the factors related to change and analyze the stakeholders that are affected. We talked about it just in a minute. Consider how the organization operates. The, so if you have to change your structure, you need to do it. You know, with digitalization, a lot of people embrace what we call management 3.0. They, they change the whole corporate culture into a more digital culture because you need to prepare people to use mobile apps, uh, uh, remote work, and a lot of other types of applications that they're not used to. So you can't come just like this and say, okay, let's use Zoom, let's use whatever, let's do that, let's do that. No, you have to prepare them. You have to set culture, a corporate culture through regulations and then you have to do capacity building for them. So we have to uh, formulate the change management strategy, detailed change management plan. It's very important to have an annual plan or a, a semi-annual plan, execute the change management plan. So you need to have a monitoring and, uh, and evaluation plan and also implementation plan outcomes uh, uh, and also uh, results. And then you need to, complete the change management efforts means that you have to evaluate the outcomes against objectives. You have to know whether your design was effective, whether the implementation is right or not, whether you have achieved the results or not. So these are some of the uh, main important um, you know, factors you need to take into consideration. And this, you cannot just apply it in the institutional organization you're working with, but also for yourself because you cannot be efficient in your organization if you don't work on yourself. So you have three crisis stages, then you have the crisis, and then you have the post-crisis. So monitor crisis risk, make decisions about how to manage potential crisis, train people, then collect and, and process information. Uh, um, for crisis team decision-making, it's very important to collect data. And today we are in the world of big data, so it's much more easier to collect data with uh, digital platforms, then you create and disseminate crisis messages, and then you have to do another strategy. After the crisis, how you're going to accompany the people to, uh, to manage the, the, the situation in, in the, in the post-crisis. Uh, so you need, again, to craft messages uh, post-crisis. So, uh, Last but not least, sorry, um, how you manage revolutionary change. You, ha you have to, and as I said, clear strategic direction, very important. You need to know what you're changing. You need to know whether people would accept this change or not. You need to know whether this change can happen now or in two years, in three years, in 10 years, so you have to know that. Combining rational and symbolic levers is important to use emotional and rational thinking 
uh, about the driving factors for change and how you're going to manage it. Multiple style of change management. So you should not have only one management style. It's, it's according to the situation where you are. You have to use different styles, working with the aspects of the existing culture. Or do you need to change the corporate culture or you need just to do certain adaptation and how you're going to monitor the change? So it, it is important to have an empowering organization. Why I mentioned empower? Because capacity building is very important and you need to delegate and you need to make people lead the change with you. Clear vision, commitment, experimentation, interim stages and targets, sustain top management commitment, and you need to win the hearts and minds. Because after all, to conclude all this, you work with people. You spend a lot of efforts managing people more than managing projects. Then you need to learn how to work with people. You need to learn how to manage your, their minds and hearts in order for them to buy in into your project to support you in your change. It's very important. And these are many of the aspects of a leader. But before being a leader, you need to be a very good manager. Then you move on to another up-level stage to be a leader, and you need to be able to lead change. First of all, in your life, then your own small community, and then in your country, and then you can be an advocate leader for your continent. Thank you very much and a very happy and honored to share with you these insights today. And I'm really willing to interact and exchange with you in another occasion. Thank you very much.